Welcome to the first episode of Community Questions. In this series, I'll be focusing on commonly asked questions along with some of the more creative inquiries and how to build specific things in ZBrush. In this first episode, we're going to talk about advanced camera controls based off of a question asked by Hassan. Is there an easier way to rotate your object around a specific area? I find the rotation controls to be too loose. If you look at Mudbox, for example, you could frame your camera on a specific area, and when you do a rotate, it stays steadily focused on that area. With ZBrush, I wasn't able to find that extra control, especially if I wanted to frame on the face or the hands. Zooming in manually and, or trying to rotate around such areas can be very frustrating. Okay, so ZBrush actually has a handful of options available to you if you want to focus on a specific part of your mesh. You've got local transformation, hide show masking, polygroups, subtools, and you can even use the timeline. Okay, so first, let's take a look at local transformations. Now what this does is it changes the pivot point of your camera. Typically, with it off, if you click anywhere in the black and you rotate, you'll notice that your object pretty much stays centered because you're rotating around the X, Y, and Z axis. You're rotating around the origin point, basically, the center of your canvas. Notice how your model pretty much stays right in the center. Okay, now if you turn local rotation on, or local transformation on, and you touch anywhere on your mesh, even if you control Z, wherever you last touched, the camera will now use that as an anchor. That is now the center of your canvas, even though it's technically not. So local transformation will basically change the anchor point of your camera. So if I wanted to work on this armament, I would touch the armament, and then the camera will continue to focus around it. Now if you notice, this mesh is kind of heavy, especially with me trying to record this, so I'm getting weird clipping issues. Now if you need to focus specifically on an object, you can use the subtools. With a subtool selected, hit the eye icon next to it, and it'll turn everything off excluding that specific subtool. Now I can rotate around it freely, and keep in mind, local transformation still works, so I can work on the inside of this thing and, oh, it changed the uh, anchor point again. So let's say all of your stuff is on, and you want to focus on the body, so you hit the eye icon without selecting the subtool. What does it do? Oh, looks like it turned it off. So basically, if you hit the eye before selecting the subtool, it's just going to turn it invisible. Make sure to select the subtool first if you want to focus on it. Alright, so we've already covered how to change the anchor point and how to isolate a subtool itself, but we can go one further. You can hold Control, Shift, and tap on any polygroup to further isolate your work area. And even if you don't use polygroups, you can still hold down Control, Shift, and drag a green rectangle over your mesh. This will hide anything outside of it. So you don't actually have to use polygroups, but uh, they do help. Now, for those of you that are not sure what I just did, you don't know what polygroups are, and you're not familiar with the clipping menu, I'll give you a brief tooltip real quick. So, if you hold Control and Shift, you'll notice that your brush palette changed. This is your clipping menu, basically. You've got four clip brushes, two selection brushes, and three slice brushes. The two that we're going to be focusing on are the selection brush. So, if you have, uh, well, by default, you'll have Select Rect. So if you hold Control shift and you drag over, notice you got that green box again, let go, and it hides everything outside of the box. So there are other shortcuts. If you hold Control shift and you tap in the black, notice that you get your mesh back. Now, if uh, you have something hidden and you hold Control shift and Alt, and then drag a red, <laughs> a red rectangle over your mesh, notice that it hides whatever's inside of that. Alright, so to get our mesh back, we hold Control shift tap Then, hold Control shift you get a green box, and it'll hide anything outside of it, but if you hold Alt, it'll hide anything that's inside of it. So green, you get anything inside, tap. Red, you get everything outside. Okay, with me so far? Okay, now let's go over the other two types of brushes real quick. You've got the clip circle, which when drug over pretty much flattens your... <laughs> it's more of a, uh, a deformation brush than a selection brush. Okay? 
and uh, the others act the same way. You've got clip curve, clip rec, and clip circle center. Uh, it just draws the circle differently. Uh, in fact, actually, uh, some of these have unique controls, like the clip circle center. We're going to go to the slice circle. All right. So hold Control Shift, and you'll notice the more that I drag, it just increases the size. It's not actually moving the circle like it would a normal brush. So for these, you have to have or you have to hold down the space bar, and you can move it. So you can drag it off to the side and be like, oh, okay, and move it around the center. All right. Notice that I keep holding the space bar to move it. All right. So now if I let go, you'll notice that it didn't actually select anything as much as it actually just simply cut into the mesh, it changed the geometry, or the topology, sorry. It changed the topology, and it automatically grouped whatever was inside of the, uh, of the clip brush. So if I hold Control Shift, and I change this back to the Select Rec, hold Control Shift and I tap, notice, like I showed you before, that it automatically selects that polygroup. All right, so, those are your shortcuts uh, and how they work with polygroups. To create a polygroup without using this circle, you can simply hold down Control, which is your mask, paint on a mask, and then press Control and W, and it'll mask whatever you painted on there. And again, hold Control, Shift, bloop. There you go. And it shows it. All right, so with that out of the way, we can get to the final part of this lesson how to control your camera using your timeline. Okay, so first go up to Movie, and we're going to dock this on the side. So open up your side menu, go to Movie, grab this little button right here, and drag it over. All right, go down to Timeline, click Show, and you'll notice it's right here. And then go down to Timeline Tracks. Make sure you have camera selected, and you can basically pan around your camera, get a perspective you like, like let's say uh, you want to render this guy constantly from this angle. You can then just simply tap up here in the timeline and it'll save it. Then what you can do is you can pretty much play around now. So if I wanted to like zoom in on his armor and go, oh man his hand is totally screwed up, we need to sculpt that. You can then tap again and say, okay whenever I want to work on his hand I want to return to this this angle right here. Now, let's say you're ready to render him, you've uh, worked out some kinks, and uh, you're on this side, you're like, well, I want to get back to the render perspective. How do I do that? You can go into Timeline and say, go previous. And there you are. And then you can go next if you want to work on the hand. And uh, you can save as many of these as you like. Uh, as long as your camera is selected when you're tapping up here, then uh, you're pretty much good to go. Now, keep in mind that this timeline uh, always stays the same size. And sometimes by accident, you can double click and you'll notice that it gets bigger. It just zoomed in a little bit. So you can click your timeline to get out. If you want to get rid of one of these points, like the one that I just accidentally created, just grab it and drag it off. And you'll be fine. And uh, I think that is pretty much it. Um, as a final, uh, final uh, I guess, tip, you can press F on the keyboard and it will center your mesh. Okay, so uh, anyway, uh, I hope you guys found uh, this lesson useful. Um, I would like to continue making these, uh, so if you guys have any questions or comments, uh, feel free to drop them down below, um, you know, like and subscribe and all that other YouTube stuff, but uh, uh, you could also hit me up on my DeviantArt page, um, or just simply, you know, uh, throw something in my inbox, you know, whatever. And uh, I will try to produce maybe one of these a week if uh, I get an interesting question. So, uh, yeah, until next time. Later.